Danette Joy Crawford is a well-known evangelist, TV host, and the president of Joy Ministries Evangelistic Association. She joins us today to talk about how to have abundant provision and blessing in your life. In her new project, God, You've Got Mail. Welcome back to Harvest, Danette. Thank you. Okay. So good to be here. So God has mail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute. But today you've joined us to talk about provision and blessing. But and you know what you you know yes. a thing or two about that. We both share something in common. Um, we're are single moms. Well, my daughter's a young adult now, so you still have some yes. uh, some more training to go through. <laughs> high school years. <laughs> yeah, you're in high school years high now. High school years now. So, but there was a time when um, you had to practice what you preach about wanting God's blessing, obtaining it, and living that life to get it. Uh, tell us about your background. Well, I, I share in my book that I really learned how to walk by faith, which I thought I was really walking by faith mm -hmm. as a young evangelist. And I'm still doing it today. I just have bigger numbers, more zeros behind it. But when everything changed in my life, when my husband left, when my daughter was just two weeks old, and I really learned, okay, am I going to trust God as my provider? Do I really believe what I've been teaching and preaching and what I've been reading in the Word, that God is going to bring me through this situation? And so that's when the rubber met the road, and I had to say, okay, I, I'm going to take this and I'm going to live according to the principles and I can stand on the promises. We can stand on those promises that he's our provider if we're living according to the principles. And that's where the whole book, the thought of the whole book came out of. Now in that situation, was it, was it difficult that you not only had to be strong for yourself, but for the child as well? Oh, yes. Yes, it really was. And you know, it's when we are in challenging times like that, God wants to frame it for us and then give us that oomph, that, uh, that hope, that rope of hope to hang on and keep going. And, and really, you're, you're exactly right. With my little girl hanging on and, and knowing that I needed to be strong and I needed to come through for her. Okay. As well. So you say that there are 15 keys to abundant provision. Yes. Talk to me first, explain what is abundant provision? Abundant is more than enough. Okay. Now, I will say that sometimes more than enough is $1.59 more than enough, <laughs> but God will give you more than enough. And I learned that if I were, were just do what God was telling me to do, obedience really is the key to so many blessings. And here I was, you know, I call the book, God, You've Got Mail, because God framed it for me. I wanted to just quit. I wanted just to give up because here I was with a little newborn baby, no income. My husband left. I wasn't traveling in ministry at the time. And God said, Danette, if you do what I tell you to do, everything's going to be all right. And he said, this really belongs to me. So I would go to my mailbox. I would take out the mail. And when my bills came in, Valerie, I would not even open them. I'd say, God, <laughs> you've got mail. And okay, I, would, I get it. <laughs> yeah. And I'd put them in a folder marked God's mail and I wouldn't even open them until I get money and I'd say, okay, God, which one of your bills do you want me to pay for you today? Mm -hmm. Well, talk to me about the keys. We're not going to give away everything, but talk about some of the keys because this is not one of those name it and claim it um, right. messages. You're saying there are some you know, principles to obtaining God's pr abundant provision. Yes, and we have responsibility. And when we walk in that responsibility, God taught me that everything I have has come from the Lord. Every dollar that he puts in my hand, I need to pray and say, God, what do you want me to do with this? And so, you know, we say, oh, well, we're praying and God puts it in our hand and then we just go down to Macy's and get the new dress or mm -hmm. we do this or we do that. You better hear from God. And he taught me that he would give me a logical instructions, but if I would obey, abundant provision would come my way because I was doing what he said. I remember one time, he gave me $100. It was all that I had for the month. I had a little baby, the new, little newborn baby, diapers, baby yes. food, everything. It was the beginning of the month. I had $100 for mm. the whole entire month. He spoke to me in a dream to give it to a pastor's daughter whose church I had preached at many times in another state. I was like, this cannot be God. When you obey immediate obedience, that seed is what released my provision for that month and actually abundant provision for, for a long time after that. And let's talk about what you mean when you say provision, because sometimes, you know, we hear these messages of like, you know, uber blessing. And I think and so, sometimes maybe there's a disconnect because people are going, I just want enough money to pay my bills right. and make sure my kids have a decent life, you know. So what do you mean by provision? Provision means your needs, yeah. exactly what your needs are. Your needs and your wants are often different. Mm -hmm. And so 
And you know what? This reminds me of something that I talk about in my book about the manna. And God was providing because we had to pray in food. We had to pray in everything, diapers, baby food, everything. And so um, the Lord was bringing provision to us. And we lived on corn dogs for months. And I talk about it. I got so sick of corn dogs. To this day, I will not buy a corn dog. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> and so here I was. And, you know, I was complaining about the corn dogs. And God, I didn't connect it at first. He said, I, Danette, I want you to fast for 21 days. So I went on this fast. And, you know, at the tail end of this fast, I was just thinking, man, I can't wait to have some corn dogs. And at the end, the Lord said, Danette, don't complain about the manna. At the end of that fast, those corn dogs, they taste like filet mignon. <laughs> and when we're in the season of crossing over, we go from the land of not enough to the land of more than enough. We walk through that wilderness time, and sometimes it's just enough. Sometimes it's the manna that you're really not that excited about, but it's God's provision for the day. And I want to encourage folks that it's a temporary season. We go through these different seasons, and this too will pass if you just don't quit in the midst of it. Okay, so now there's someone watching who's saying, you know, I understand, I understand you, you want me to sow, you know, sow, sow a seed, um, but I, I'm unemployed, you know, I have no money for daycare. How does that look in a practical way that that last little bit of money that's coming in, you now want me to obey God and do whatever he says? He may say keep it, but he may say give right. it away. And you know what? Our seed is not just our finances. Okay. You need to seed your need and know where to sow. Like I would need encouragement. Oh my gosh. So mm -hmm. God would tell me to go encourage someone mm. and he would teach me to get my eyes off of myself because there was always somebody hurting worse than me. There was always somebody that had less than me. And when I would get a little bit of food, I would take a lot of it, sometimes all of it, and I would take it over to the subsidized housing area and I would give it out to these single moms. And they would say, well, Danette people... The naysayers, they would say, oh, Danette, why are you doing that? You have less than them. They have food stamps. They have this. I said, no, but I have Jesus, and I know he's my provider. And I would lead them to the Lord, teaching them that God is a father to the fatherless and teaching them about he was the provider. And we have people, single moms, that are saved, running after God. Their kids are saved today as a result of me taking them a bag of groceries mm -hmm. 14 years ago. Now, what would you say to the person? Because I would imagine there's, there's somebody out there who... They've heard all these sorts of messages. Mm -hmm. They've tried to do everything the best that they can to, you know, kind of follow the formula, but they're still divorced. Their kid's still on drugs. You know, th they're still going through this financial catastrophe. And they're saying, I've tried it all. It doesn't work for me. What would you say to that person? The word always works, but you've got to keep standing. You know, I, I received in the midst of living this out, I had um, a broken back and I went through great physical challenges. They told me I needed two major surgeries. I'd be out of commission for a year. Mm. God told me he was going to do a miracle. I had to stand in faith from May 2001 to November 4th, 2004. Sometimes our miracle, a lot of times our miracle doesn't happen as quick or as fast as we want it. But the word always works. The lie is that the word doesn't work. The lie is that God loves everybody else and he'll do it for them and not for us. No, that's the lie. But the truth is God always comes through. And in the midst of those times, what I, what I would do, I would look back and I would remember all the times that God did bring me through and all the things that I did have. Stop focusing on what you don't have Really rejoice about what you do have because this too, it shall pass. Maybe not as quick as you hope, but it will pass. And what about, what would you say to those people who are saying like they're expecting this huge thing to happen when sometimes we see the Bible says, give us this day oh. our daily bread. So it's a daily walk. It's a daily right. walk. And I, <laughs> during the time, you know, I would much rather have my monthly bread all up front, <laughs> you know, and, and if, if possible, I'd just like to plan it out for the year, but it's daily. And Valerie, it's because God wants us to trust him. So many times we have our trust in our source of provision and not in our provider. And so God wants to rearrange that. And he causes us every day and he will provide every day and give us this day our daily bread. Yes. Okay, Danette, would you just kind of look into that camera? That's your camera right there <laughs> and speak to that person who's struggling and going through. I just want to challenge you today that no matter what you're going through, 
God is bigger. And you know, I can relate because I know that there were times that I think, God, you're going to bring this one through and that one through. And there were times that I really didn't think I was going to make it. But that is a lie. And the truth is, God is always going to bring you through. I want you just to do what I, what I call crazy praise. I would get my daughter and I would just walk around my house and I would just begin to worship and praise and shout and thank God for everything that I did have. You know, I can remember thanking God that I had a bar of soap. I can remember thanking God that I had hot water because there was times and, and there, there was about six weeks that I didn't have hot water because my hot water heater broke and I didn't have money to fix it. Wherever you're at today, you need to know that this too shall pass, that this is just a temporary season. And as you walk through this season, you're going to come out victoriously. You know, during this time, God said, and people would say to me, oh, you're going to minister to other people out of what you're going through. Well, that was the last thing that I wanted to hear. But the truth is, I did come through. And the truth is, you're going to come through today as well. Amen, and thank you so much, Danette. To connect with Danette, go to Joy Ministries Online, or you can go to harvest-tv.com and click on Show Info in the menu bar for an easy way to connect to her site and to get a copy of God, You've Got Mail.